Good morning, friends. It is bright and early. The heat wave finally hit us in Southwest Washington. It's supposed to be in the high 90s this week. And we're gonna do a full garden tour. I haven't been out in the garden in probably five days to a week. I can't remember, honestly, the last time I was out there. I have not been getting out there as much as I've wanted to. So I think things are gonna be changed since last time we were in there. Today, I really have to deal with the garlic. It is all cured and dried and ready to go. Today is July 28th, so we're getting out here a little bit later, and I wanted to get out here before the heat sets in, and the whole garden is, oh, it's beautiful right now. I think it's in like the mid, mid 60s. So let's just get right into it. I'm already looking and seeing what's going on, and oh, things are, oh, there's a bunny. Last year we had a bunny family live in my potatoes. She's right there. So I wonder if there's another nest in my garden right now. You can see <laughs> there are weeds and things, but that's just life right now and that's okay. So we're gonna, oh, there's another bunny. There one goes. That's why my peas have been doing pretty poorly or my black beans as well. So my ch Chinese long beans are finally starting to grow. They have taken so long to take off but we've got some tendrils that are coming up the trellis, which is very, very exciting. Over here, these raised beds, these instant gardens that I put in are doing fantastic. We are finally seeing some fruit set on our tomato plants. And I am so happy with how these are looking. You know what, I forgot I was gonna bring a basket out here because I knew that there were gonna be things that needed to be harvested. So maybe I'm gonna go run inside and grab a basket. So as we see things, oh, look at all these baby green beans. You see all that? So as we find things, we can go ahead and harvest them. It's that time of year where you really don't wanna go out into the garden without a basket. Much better. So let's take a look here. These green beans on this, in this bed, are looking really good too. I've been harvesting green beans very, very regularly. In this raised bed, I have three tomato plants. Two of them are caged up. One of them I did not cage and it's falling on the green beans, which is totally okay. It's just definitely kind of smothering out these green beans, but we're still getting a lot of fruit off them. So we'll get in here and harvest all of these. I did also plant some Rebecca in here that I did not think was going to amount to anything, but they're starting to put on blooms. And this one, is absolutely stunning. We have a few different varieties of Rebecca out here and they've blown me away. One of my goals this year was to have a lot more flowers in the garden. And I think Rebecca is probably one of my new favorite flowers. Last year, I planted a ton of zinnias and those blew me away. And the zinnias are just starting to bloom right now, but the Rebecca are incredibly stunning. And I can't wait to show you that when we get to it but I wanna make sure I get these green beans while I'm sitting right here. Some of them need a couple more days to mature. And while I was down here, I did notice one thing I wanted to show you. This Asian long bean has put on one flower. So we might get one bean off of this. Hopefully we get more. You know what, it looks like that might be, looks like that might be a little bud right there too starting and maybe right there as well. So we'll see how this goes. My dream for this trellis is for it to be completely covered and for the beans to be hanging down because these Asian long beans get about a foot to a foot and a half long. And when I watch other people's garden videos, they are so much more ahead of us. We are about two weeks behind of what we typically are, but because we are in a more cooler and temperate climate than a lot of people that are in the South, we haven't even started tomato season yet. And a lot of people in the South are already finishing up tomato season. So I just have to remember that, that we're a little bit more behind. Now this is incredible. Coming from this bed we were just in, we have some Roma tomatoes over here and they're setting on a lot of fruit. I do need to come in here and prune back a lot of just the foliage, like these green leaves are just not necessary. And we can go ahead and remove a bunch of that and just make this area a little bit more breathable, but we don't need to do that right now. I'm loving the green beans planted with the tomatoes. I don't think these pepper plants are gonna amount to anything. 
So that's a really good learning opportunity for me that I will not be planting peppers around my tomatoes next year, but I love the green beans around my tomato plants. The ginger in these pots are not doing very well. I honestly don't think we're gonna get much when it comes to that, but that's okay because I have another exciting thing to show you when we get into the garden. Oh man, I thought my peas were done for the year and there are so many peas on here. I'm gonna have to pick all these peas. I need to make sure they're still sweet. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay. We gotta pick all these before they get too bitter. Mm. So good. When I pick peas and green beans, I like to leave the flower blossom end on the plant so I don't have to pick it off later. That's just kind of the way I've always done it. Coming from the peas where we were just picking, we have this bed here that we just planted out. This has the newest seeds in the ground. And in this part of the bed, from the end of the bed to that first piece of wood, we have a couple different varieties of kale that I planted for a fall harvest. We have some scarlet kale and blue ridge kale, and these have sprouted. So that's pretty encouraging and exciting. Over here, we planted carrots. And right there, we planted carrots, two different varieties. These ones were Bolero carrots. These carrots are Napoli carrots, and I don't see any carrots that have sprouted yet. But what I do see in here, which is kind of interesting, are a bunch of volunteer tomato plants. I had tomatoes here last year, and some of the tomatoes probably fell on the ground and rotted and their seeds have sprouted. So these are volunteers. These aren't going to amount to anything, but what else I see in here too, do you see that footprint, 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 footprint? Those are deer footprints. And now I am very certain that was eating my black beans and has munched on my green beans are deer. And these green beans are bouncing back really, really well. I definitely think we're gonna get a harvest of green beans before the fall. These are Blue Lake bush beans. And you can see some of them got gnawed on, but they are gonna come back, I think, with a vengeance and produce a lot of beans for us. Coming up this way, our potatoes in our grow bags are about ready to harvest, which is super fun. And our potatoes in our ground are about ready to harvest. I'm gonna wait for them to completely die back before we harvest them, but you can see they're starting to die along with this one over here in this grow bag. Potatoes are absolutely one of my favorite vegetables to grow because picking them or harvesting them is like a treasure hunt. I love digging them out of the ground and seeing what we get. Sometimes it's abundant, sometimes it's a little lackluster and you just never know till you get in there and you start digging. So, oh my goodness. <laughs> I am shocked. Like I said, friends, I have not been out here in a while and I completely gave up on this bed. It is full of weeds. One reason I gave up on it, but another reason, well, that's why. And things are happening in this bed. I can't believe it. Oh my goodness. First off, we have some kale we're gonna harvest in just a minute, and carrots, and these carrots are doing really well. I don't think they're quite ready to harvest, but they're doing pretty well in here. This bed is my onion bed, but I completely gave up on it because there's grass in here. There's so many weeds. I've got to get these weeds out before they flower and go to seed, because that's just gonna be terrible. But look at the size of some of these onions in here. Now they are not huge, but they are way, way bigger than I expected. And I started these from seed. So this is a beautiful, beautiful sight to see. But you can see in here, there are some teeny tiny ones. I thought that that's how the whole bed was. But with all these weeds, I just kind of gave up on it. I wrote it off, but I think we're gonna get a harvest. I mean, look at that one in there. I'm happy with the size of that one. Wow, awesome. If you come around here, this here is a echinacea plant and it won't bloom until next year. Echinacea plants are perennials, so they'll come back and come back and I have something really exciting to show you over in a different area, but this is doing really well along with our turmeric. Can you see 
how beautiful these turmeric plants are. I completely wrote these off last time we did a garden tour and we were in the garden together and they have just exploded. And I think the reason they've done so well is because these pots right here get watered from the irrigation that is in this onion bed. And I had a couple of my elderberry plants in a different area that weren't getting watered and they started to die. So I moved them over here and you can see that this soil is damp and now they're getting watered every day and this plant is starting to come back along with this one. So I'm really happy about that. Love you, have a good day. One big lesson I've learned this year is pots have to be watered on a more regular basis because you can see that these wood chips right here are damp and that's because this whole area gets watered from this bed and some pots we're going to get to the plants inside them have died because I just haven't had the time to be out here on a daily basis like I have the last two years which normally I would be able to water hand water no problem and that's just not the reality of this year and so next year if i do have which i am going to have a lot of pots as well and containers i am going to one probably have more time and two i am going to make sure that they are either somewhere where the irrigation can hit them or they will be intentionally irrigated so we're not going to have some of the die off that you're going to see later on in this garden tour so now i want to show you the cabbage patch and it is a beautifully jungly mess and i'm i'm happy with it or at least that is what I'm telling myself. You can see that this cilantro is now flowered and it is going to seed. So all these little round balls at one point were little white flowers like this. And once they flower, they turn into this. And eventually they're gonna dry out and we're gonna harvest these. And this is coriander, the spice. And it's one of my favorite spices. It has kind of a citrusy flavor and it's wonderful. So we have a ton of that. It's not the prettiest thing, but it tastes fantastic. So it's worth the look of it. My red cabbages are taking forever to head up, but they are starting to finally form little heads. So that's really encouraging. I'm really happy about that. There are tons of weeds in here that I need to come harvest. Some of our green cabbage is ready to be harvested. I mean, look at this guy. We probably should harvest that and make a coleslaw out of it. The calendula flowers are starting to set seed at the end of this bed, so we're gonna be harvesting these soon. And over here, we have our tomatillos, and I have already started harvesting some tomatillos, like that one's ready, that one's ready. Once they feel like the tomatillo is filled out the paper, they're ready for harvest. I haven't gotten enough yet to make any salsa, but the harvests are starting to come in and I'm pretty happy about that. I see some other pretty mature ones over here we might be able to get to. Not quite ready. There's still a lot of room in this paper for that tomatillo to grow, so I know that's not ready. But all these little itty bitty flowers hopefully are gonna turn into tomatillos. So probably in about three weeks or so, we're gonna be flooded with tomatillos and I'm excited for that to be the case. We are moving this week. So I definitely am grateful for the timing because big harvest is not for about two to three weeks. So we're gonna move, hopefully get settled in, and then it's gonna be serious harvest mode. And that's gonna make my life a lot easier not to be trying to move in the middle of harvest mode. And as I'm standing here harvesting a few tomatillos, I'm noticing some pretty exciting things happening over here. This is our tomato jungle, which I have not been pruning except for some of the foliage. And we are seeing so much green fruit on here. And that is absolutely incredible. There's so much fruit happening everywhere. And I cannot wait to hopefully be flooded with tomatoes. And you can see these tomato plants are starting to get really tall. I am 5'4", and 
these tomato plants are now taller than me. So that's exactly what we want. And a lot of them have fruit on it. I don't know what variety all of these tomatoes are, but I don't really care. As long as I get something, I'm gonna be happy. So tomatillos, tomatoes, and our squash bed. You can see, I don't know if you can see, all those little bees buzzing around, pollinating my squash, which is really great. I do see some baby squash in here. These are Blue Hubbard squash. They are one of my favorite. They're kind of intertwined in here because there's another one right here so I want to make sure there's going to be room for it to grow oh there's three there's another one in there right there wow oh my goodness there's a big one in there so that's kind of become a weedy jungly mess so it's going to be a treasure hunt when we get in there and we finally get to harvest This one squash plant is starting to grow out this way into the walkway, which it has another baby pumpkin or baby squash on it right there. And I want it just to grow all the way down this way and that's gonna be fun. I need to put these down so we can keep focusing. From the very promising squash bed to this bed, this is a site I have wanted to see for two years. It's two years in the making to see these echinacea or cone flowers bloom. And it's honestly a dream come true right here. I started these echinacea flowers from seed last year and they were about this big when I planted them out. I lovingly planted them. They got about a foot tall last year and that was it. That is that plant that I was showing you over in the pot that I said it's not gonna bloom until next year. Because this is a perennial and it comes back every year, I did not realize when I first started it that it does take a year for it to get established. And the fact that I started a perennial from seed is just mind blowing to me. If I can do it, you can do it. And they are absolutely stunning and beautiful. These have a lot of medicinal properties to them. Echinacea is something that a lot of people take when they're not feeling good. And I want to harvest that. But the goal of that is to have that be established for many years because you harvest the root of it from what I believe. I am so new into like herbalism and all that stuff. So I don't know exactly yet because it never was ready to harvest anything off it. And I don't know if it's gonna transplant well. I would like to transplant that and a bunch of other things to the new house. When we were out here doing the first really big harvest of the year, a bunch of you guys recommended, why aren't you gonna transplant some of the mint and oregano and things that transplant really well? And that was like an aha moment. Why hadn't I thought of that? I have no idea. And I absolutely plan to transplant some things. Like the rhubarb, I already was planning to transplant. So I don't know why I wouldn't attempt to transplant some of my other perennials that I have started myself. Coming down from our dream echinacea flowers, we have our celery. Our celery is getting pretty close to being ready to harvest. A lot of this celery we started from seed together and that looks really good. Some of it were starts that I purchased, like this one. And this is making me a little nervous because I don't think we can harvest this one now because it has already gone to seed. So I bet you anything, this plant is gonna be super bitter. So let's give it a taste test. This just might mean that I need to get out here sooner than I thought to harvest this celery. not good not not good this one is going to be for the chickens and whew, that is super bitter it's the only one that i see that's like this and the chick the girls are going to get a really nice treat something green to eat and they will enjoy it here goes They're pretty excited about it. My loss is their gain. So from the celery patch, there are quite a few cabbages in here that are ready to harvest. So I need to get out here and harvest them before they get any more bug damage on them because there is a little bit of damage. But look at this beauty. That is stunning. All of these cabbages need to come out. And look at this. Oh, there's two of them. There's another one right there too. So we have three frogs in here. 
that cabbage definitely needs to come out but you can see i don't know why these red cabbages are just taking so much longer to form heads it just must be that they're a longer day to maturity and that is okay frogs are absolutely welcome and encouraged in the garden because they eat bugs and pests and i'm really really happy about that so let's go to the squash bed and i can see that there are some things in here ready we have our beautiful straw flowers i am loving these straw flowers i think when i braid my garlic i was thinking about this this morning actually when i was getting ready is i think i want to braid some of these straw flowers into my braids of garlic i think that would be really pretty because straw flowers dry really, really well. That's why I grew them. I have one zucchini plant back there and it doesn't look like there's any zucchini ready to be harvested off of it, but this yellow squash is definitely ready. So we're gonna go ahead and get this one. And she's a beauty. We have, oh, there's another one over here that's ready. Let's get this one as well. Don't mind the weeds. There is some winter squash in here and I don't know exactly what plant this is. It's amongst all these weeds. I really need to get out here and weed this bed and this bed because it's a disaster. We did plant these little zucchini seeds about two weeks ago in here and look how fast they're growing my zucchini in the other bed is not doing well and so i wanted to try to see if i could get a harvest from zucchini so that's why i planted there there and there and they are growing well i do need to set a day to come in here and clean this up because the weeds are completely out of control but even with that we still have a pumpkin that's growing right there. I don't know what kind it is, but that is promising that we have some sort of growth. It is amazing to me that amongst these weeds, I've never had weed pressure in my raised beds like this ever before. I think it's because we had such a wet spring and the fact that I have not been out here. Normally I would be out here every other day at least. And when you're out here doing little maintenance, it makes it a lot easier. Just haven't had the time. And so just the fact that we're getting anything, I'm grateful for it and I'm excited for it. And that is the best we can do. And so that's the best we can do. From the weedy squash bed, we have some beauty that is coming out of it. These are probably some of the prettiest zinnias I have ever grown. These are queen lime series. I don't know exactly the variety of them, but I love these really puffy zinnias that just have so many petals. I do like these zinnias as well that are kind of more of a single petal, but the puffy ones are my favorite. We also have another one of these squash plants that is doing really well and it is growing out this way. I don't see any baby squash on it. Oh, I do. I spoke a little too soon. There's one right there. And so we'll see how well she does. I've talked about at the new garden, there's gonna be some terracing because that the garden is gonna be on such a big slope. And I had this thought this last week that on the terraces, because we don't have to build retaining walls or anything, there's enough land that we can do flat, slope, flat, slope. And I think it'd be super, super cool to on to plant on the edge of where it starts to slope all of my winter squash so that it can just vine down the slope and it can grow in an area where I otherwise wouldn't be planting things that I need to go out and harvest and pick on a regular basis because a squash plant you basically put it in the ground you let it do its thing all year and you harvest it one time or maybe twice maybe you know you have one pumpkin that's ready here and there but i just have this vision of winter squash growing down these terraces and i think that's going to be really beautiful and exciting so we'll see how that goes together next year speaking of squash we have our one bed here and over here this is supposed to be our corn patch and it has become a weedy weedy mess and i've learned a very big lesson in this area right here the last two years i did not till this area i continued to put wood chips and i continued to build up the soil that way and i just planted directly in the ground well there were a bunch of weeds in here and i thought to make my life easier you know what i'm just going to go ahead and till well bad bad idea anytime you disturb the soil the natural soil 
there's already tons of seed. There's a seed bank in that soil. And when you go to disturb it, what happens is you've opened up that seed bank, that floodgates of seeds. And that is why I now have a weedy mess. This used to be a really nice covered area in wood chips. And you can see that it has gone crazy wild. I already have resigned myself to the fact that I'm not getting any corn. I mean, I have one there, one there, and one there. And I'm not gonna get a corn harvest out of here this year, which is totally fine. I will attempt to grow corn next year, but I'm gonna buy corn from a local farmer. But this has been a huge learning lesson for me. I'm glad I did it, even though it was epic fail, because this just reinforces the fact to myself that ideally, I do not want to do a tilled garden moving forward. I want to do more of a lasagna style, no-till, back to Eden, whatever you wanna call it, style garden. But even amongst the mess that we have here and here, it's going really well. I planted these potatoes in here where the chicken run used to be. I have not layered any more straw in here, so I don't know how well it's totally gonna work out. But when these plants start to die back, we will go ahead and harvest hopefully some potatoes out of there. And like I said, potatoes are one of my favorite things to harvest. So coming this way, we have some more of our beautiful winter squash growing out this way. I love when my winter squash grows into the walkways. I think it's really beautiful and romantic. And from our winter squash, we have this bed and this is our determinate tomatoes, our tomatoes that only grow to a certain height that I have in these tomato cages. And they are doing phenomenal in here, absolutely phenomenal. They are starting to set fruit. So we're gonna get fruit here, hopefully in the next, I don't know, three to four weeks that are ripe for harvest. And my experiment again of growing green beans along where my tomatoes are is working out really well. You can see all of these flowers in here and these baby green beans. And these are all gonna be future green beans. So this has been a very, very successful experiment that I'm gonna definitely do moving forward. I am all about just trying things and seeing what works. The thing is you can do exactly what you see other people do in gardens. And because people, because we all live in different climates, different, weather patterns, different moisture and humidity levels and all those types of things. Just because it works for someone does not mean it's going to work for you. And just because it works for you doesn't mean it's going to work for someone. So I do watch a lot. I read a lot when it comes to gardening, but I also just do a lot of let's put seeds in the ground and see what happens. And I wanted to talk a little bit or mention about my pruning of my tomatoes. We live in a very dry climate. We do not get a lot of humidity where we are because we get hardly any rain. Even though the Pacific Northwest is known for rain, it's not known for rain between the mid-June to early September. Typically, we might only get one or two days of rain and that's very, very normal for us. So we just don't get those humidity issues that people that live maybe in more Southern climates or get more rain, they deal with, you deal with more humidity. So you probably would not want to let your tomatoes vine out and bush out this much because one of your main concerns is going to be blight and disease and mildew and viruses and funguses due to humidity, which I don't have to worry about that quite as much here. Here we planted out together some more green beans and those are growing out really well. And then I planted on my own and I told you that these were an epic fail, but you can see all these carrots have started to come up. So what I thought was a fail ended up so far being a success. So that is pretty encouraging. I'm gonna get this little weed right here while we're at it. And this one, cause this is that grass that just goes crazy. So I'm really happy about, oh look, there's a sock. Why do I have a sock in my garden? I don't know. And then I planted more lettuce down here. So the lettuce that I planted earlier is done for the year. And now we're gonna have some more lettuce in probably about three weeks or so. You can see all the fruit that's setting, which I'm really excited about. Tomatoes are one of my favorites. And look how big, look how big. These are Roma tomatoes, so happy with this. But I do need to come out here and thin out the foliage. My black bean bed, once again, this has been a roller coaster of emotions. And I think that they're gonna come back 
and then they get eaten and then I think they're going to come back and then they get eaten. So I'm just going to resign myself to the fact that we are not getting any black beans this year. I can't imagine these plants after being eaten down <laughs> this many times, probably for the fourth or fifth time that we're getting any black beans, but that's okay. Next year hopefully will be our year. I still do need to come out here and weed. But in this bed, we have already harvested one cucumber and there is so much fruit on this cucumber vines that I cannot wait for cucumbers. Cucumbers have never been my favorite thing, but they are starting to become one of my favorite things. I am currently obsessed with tzatziki sauce and I think what I'm gonna do with my cucumbers is I'm gonna shred them, some of them, and I'm gonna freeze dry them. And all winter long, I can make tzatziki sauce with freeze dried shredded cucumbers because when I put the cucumbers in the yogurt, they will reconstitute, right? That's what I think. I'm excited. I had this thought the other day and I was pretty blown away with the idea of that. So I'll take you along that journey to see if freeze dried cucumbers can be rehydrated into tzatziki sauce. These green beans, I had the same thought of them as I did those black beans. And I kept thinking that they were a no-go. The weeds were taking over. The They were getting eaten by, I think, I think it's a deer that's been eating them. And I harvest green beans every time I'm out here. I probably should do it more regularly, but I can only do it when I'm available. And so we're gonna get some green beans out of here today. It's amazing what little space bush beans, bush green beans take up and how much food you can get from them. And so if you like green beans and you don't have a big space, I would recommend growing them or trying to grow them because they are productive. From the green beans, which I see a couple more I need to harvest, we have our volunteer potatoes and they are doing really, really well. Potatoes are the name of the game this year in this garden. I'm excited about that because I have a better way this year with a basement to be able to store them for a little bit longer term storage. Speaking of potatoes, we were just there. We are coming over here. Our borage has exploded and I think it's about done. I've never grown borage before. It kind of, after it gets so big, it kind of falls over. And then I think it just kind of dies back. I don't know if this is going to seed here. I think those are seeds right there. Let's see. Oh yeah. I'm going to collect some seeds here shortly. I'll let a few more of these flowers die back. I'll just throw that in there and we'll collect some borage seeds and maybe plant borage from seed we saved ourselves, which will be really fun. In this patch, these are more potatoes. These ones are about ready to harvest. You can see they're dying back. Typically you wanna harvest your potatoes once they completely die back. These have flowered, so I just need to wait for them to die back. And this variety is already starting to die back here. And it looks like we've got a blackberry that we need to go ahead and pull, but I need gloves in order to do that. And I'm really happy with the progress here. From the potatoes, we have our pepper bed and potato bed. This was supposed to be just peppers, but we had potatoes take over over there. But there is some fun things that are happening here. Last time we were in here, there were some ground cherries to harvest, and it looks like I found one, two, three. You know they're ready to harvest when they fall on the ground. Last time I ate them, they weren't completely ripe. So we're gonna give these a try and see if they taste any better. They're definitely a little bit more yellow than they were last time. Oh yeah. Those are delicious. Wow. That was so incredibly sweet. Oh, oh man, there's a ton of them. So these ones I'm gonna save for Josh because Josh has not had any of them yet. That's the thing, when you're the gardener, you get the benefit of the first harvest. And so we've got these little guys that we'll give to Josh. And there are so many on here, so there's gonna be plenty for all of us to have. And I have about four of these plants, I think. And look how cool this is. We have a couple peppers. I don't know what variety of peppers this is, but one thing I really, really, really wanted to show you, this Rebecca. 
I have two of these plants. Look how stunning, absolutely stunning this flower is and this one is. It just blows me away the beauty of this flower and this will be in my garden every year from here on out. I absolutely love it and you can see all of these amazing blooms that haven't even opened yet and I'm just in awe. From the Rebecca, we have a pepper plant in here that is just loaded with peppers. I have no idea what kind of pepper this is, but I'm excited to harvest that when it's ready. We also have a bunch more pepper plants in here. See, I used Sharpie to mark these and Sharpie fades in UV light. So I need to get a different type of marker in order to mark what I have planted. This might be, I need to go back and look at my footage. It might be the sugar peach pepper, but I could be completely wrong and have no idea. So I don't know if it's a hot pepper or a sweet pepper or what, but I'm gonna get a couple of these weeds here. While I'm at it, oh, look at this. Okay, so this is not technically a weed. I did have tomatoes planted here at one point. I think it was two years ago, and this is a tomato plant. I'm gonna pull it because it's not gonna grow tomatoes before the end of the year. But over here we have some bell peppers, it looks like. And this plant right here, these are carnations that I planted and there is a blossom right here. So that's gonna be fun to watch that happen. From these peppers, I was saying this is also a potato patch. I grew potatoes in here last year and you can see that so many volunteer tomatoes or potatoes came up and we're just letting those grow and we're gonna harvest those when they're ready. We do have two more Rebecca plants over here that are just starting to open. And I'm so happy with these flowers. From our pepper potato bed, we have our other pepper bed and we've got our dwarf sunflowers and these are about ready to bloom. They are a little bit bigger than the first one that bloomed. These are about two and a half to three feet tall and they're just so cute. I can't wait to see these bloom into really big, beautiful yellow flowers. Oh my goodness. Okay, so last time we were in the garden together, we planted more basil because I only had about four basil plants that came up and they are coming up everywhere. All those little green dots, that's all basil. And I'm really happy and encouraged to see that. We also have peppers all in here and they are starting to produce peppers. This pepper plant actually has some size to it. And oh my goodness, okay, so I love growing. These Chinese five color peppers are one of the prettiest peppers I think you can grow. They start out this really pretty purple color and then they turn tan, yellow, orange, and red and they're absolutely stunning and look at what I just caught out of the corner of my eye. I grew a white carnation. <laughs> I can't believe it. That's what these plants here are. These are carnations. And this is really, really cool. I've never grown a carnation before. One thing that is really cool about a lot of the flowers that I grew this year, and I didn't really intend to do this, but it kind of happened anyway, is they're all blooming at different times. And these carnations, are taking a long time to bloom. And some of my other flowers, like my calendula, are almost done. And so by having all these different varieties of flowers in the garden, I'm really getting to enjoy all the different blooms throughout the season, and that is super exciting. And, okay, so I just got distracted and I saw something that I wanna show you. But one thing is, when I watch other people's videos in their garden with their peppers and they live in the south, their pepper plants are this big and my pepper plants are this big and that's just because we're not as hot as quickly as other climates. And it just takes a little bit more time for my pepper plants to catch up. And I don't know if you can notice, but I'm technically in the shade right now. That is causing these pepper plants not to grow as fast because they're just not quite getting as much sun as they might if they were in different areas you know, if I had different areas to plant them in. I'm saying all that because I am trying to talk myself into not being discouraged by when I watch other people because we're all at different areas and stages in our abilities, our climate and all that. And there's so many factors. And so it's okay that my pepper plants aren't that big because I'm already starting to see peppers on other plants. 
and at my new house the peppers hopefully will grow a lot bigger because there's going to be a lot more hours of sunlight for them i think i was wrong when i said that those were my peach peppers i think these here are my peach peppers and because i grew, grew a lot of them these plants are by far doing the best out of any of my pepper plants you can see there are so many peppers on here i want to make peach hot sauce and that's why i was growing these peppers and i have one two three four five six of these plants i think there are about half the size of what they're going to get and there's still so many blossoms that are going to come onto these pepper plants which is super awesome and then i have a couple other fun things is i have yarrow i have never grown yarrow before and this is really beautiful and fun. I have both this kind of like really light violet purple color. And this is the same color, maybe a little bit whiter. And then over there we have a really pretty pink yarrow. There are a lot of medicinal properties to yarrow. I don't really know what they are, but that's one of the reasons why I grew them. And then we have more of our straw flowers. This one's kind of a funny shape. Oh, look. We have a ladybug. That is a welcomed friend. So one thing I did in here and one thing I really like doing is composting in place. So my lettuce bolted, which means it went to seed and got bitter. And so what I did is I picked all my lettuce and I laid it down flat and I let it just break down between these pepper plants to give nutrients to the soil, to cover the soil. And some of these lettuces are still holding on to life because they still have enough soil and moisture in them. But these were all supposed to be just kind of like compost in place, but they're hanging on for dear life. Technically, none of this lettuce is in the ground. I have pulled it all, but it's just, it's holding on and it's growing. We have so many peppers over here. Look at all the peppers on these plants. So these pepper plants might not be the absolute most robust pepper plants you ever have seen, but they are producing a lot of fruit and that is what I am the most excited about because hot sauce is something I eat every single day and I would love to be able to grow all my own peppers for my hot sauce. I have no idea what kind of pepper this is. I'm gonna have to go back and watch and I'm gonna eat this and we're gonna see how spicy it is. So I don't, because I don't know what it is, I don't know if it's ready to harvest yet. I have a ton of these plants. There's probably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven of them. And I don't know what they are. They taste like a pepper. They are definitely not ripe. They are not spicy at all. So, oh, these are probably cayenne peppers. I think these are cayenne peppers. I think these are cayenne peppers. <laughs> I'm telling myself that, which means they've got a long way to go because these will turn red. So we're gonna let these grow. I, I think I have, if I watch when I planted these peppers, I think I talked about what type of pepper they are. So I could look back and find out for sure what type of pepper this is. Coming out of the raised bed garden, the fruit is definitely set and starting to grow. These are such amazing pears. We ate our weight in them last year. There's not quite as many on the fruit tree this year as there were last year, but there will be plenty for us to enjoy. There is a abundance of Asian pears. These are my husband's favorite. My favorite are the Bartlett pears, the other ones. These are Josh's favorite, and you can see there's just an abundance of fruit here. There are also a lot of apples, and that is something, these apples were so delicious last year, and I'm really excited to be able to enjoy apples this year again, hopefully. Same with down here. We've got a bunch of apples. What I would like to do this year is possibly get a apple press to rent or something so we could make true apple cider as opposed to making the apple cider that I did with, oh my goodness, with the juicer because I think it gives you that fresher, like raw apple cider flavor. But we just have to see with timing and everything because at the new house there are apple trees. And to be quite honest, I haven't even looked at those trees in 
probably a month. So I don't know if they really are setting fruit. This is what distracted me. I mean, look at the beauty, the size of these three apples. Those are stunning. Absolutely stunning. Now, one huge project that has been done is this whole area has been cleaned up. These weeds were taller than me. Here's a few that still need to be cleaned up right here. And I'm gonna show you how tall these weeds are. You could not even walk back here because the weeds were out of control. This is me, I'm 5'4", I'm wearing some sandals that probably give me another inch and a half or two. And you can see this weed is taller than me. And these weeds, this is another thing that needs to happen is these weeds need to come out. But these weeds were covering this entire raised bed area and it has gotten so much cleaner and it was something that was really stressing me out and I'm really glad that this project was done. You have seen a little bit of it when we were harvesting rhubarb, but I really tried not to show the whole thing because it was quite honestly embarrassing and so I'm glad that now it's an area that we can walk freely through, which we couldn't. You, there was no way you could walk through this area at all because the weeds were just as tall as these raspberry plants. And another thing while we're right here, these are blueberry bushes and there are some blueberries that are ready to harvest. Mm. Mm. Okay, they may be blue, but they still are a little bit sour, but so good. They're still a little sour. Yeah. Ooh. Those need about another week or so. I'm just excited for anything that comes out of the garden. I'm considering a win because like I said, the lack of attention this garden has gotten this year. Oh my goodness, I'm so distracted. So good. It's pretty incredible. So things can grow even with lack of attention. The, the saving grace though, is the fact that Josh put irrigation in last year. If there was not an irrigation system, this would not be what it is because we don't get rain. Some places get rain all summer long and you can get away with not having irrigation. And our climate is one area you cannot get away without having it. If you don't have the time to come out and water on a regular basis, which I honestly don't have the time. I've never had the time to do it. And so the fact that Josh was so insistent when we first put in our garden to put the irrigation system in, I am very grateful because at first I was like, it's not necessary, it's not necessary, but it's 100% necessary. When we build the new garden, that is part of the master plan is an irrigation system. And I will bring you along and show you the entire process of putting it in because it doesn't have to be too complicated in order to have an irrigation system. And it's gonna make your life a whole lot easier. Because like I said, I don't come out here every day. I wish I had the time to come out here every day. I just don't have the time right now. And so by having it watered automatically, I don't have to worry about that. Mm. I can't believe we're still getting peas. It's almost August. Can I show you what was distracting me? Well friends, that is the garden tour for July and a nice beautiful harvest. I'm just grateful that you took time out of your day to spend time with me. It's a beautiful day. It's gonna be a hot day. I've got a lot of stuff I gotta get done today. It is packing time because, well, today's Friday and we are moving on Monday and Tuesday. And I haven't done that much packing and so it's serious crunch time. So I'm gonna go inside, start packing up my kitchen, and I'm just grateful you are here with me. And if you enjoyed this, if you'd be willing to give this video a thumbs up, that would mean the world to me. I can't wait to see you guys next time. If you wanna watch more of my other videos, I'll post them right here. You can go enjoy 
between now and my next upload. And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye friends.